as, as recently as this month, there were 80, 88,000 new COVID cases were reported in children, um, making up nearly 14% of the, of the weekly caseload. So that, that's pretty much an increase. And we know here in Florida, the cases are increasing. But we're here today with good news. And that is, uh, and, and I'm just gonna say this, not as a Congresswoman, but as a grandmother. This is my favorite job, grandmother. And uh, I, I know, and I can tell you firsthand, that so many families with the little ones have minimized our children and our grandchildren's social experience. Uh, that's because of fear, not only of them getting COVID, but actually as important, them being spreaders. Because I know in my family, I have a 96 year old mother and then I have two grandchildren, one and three. And so I know we try to be very, very cautious. So this is good news because today will be the first day around the country uh, that our youngest children, uh, six months and older, will be eligible to get the COVID vaccine. Uh, FDA approved the vaccine last week and CDC this weekend also approved it and now uh, my message is this this should be up to your parents and guardians whether to get your children vaccinated and i urge everybody to consult your pediatrician or a healthcare professional that you trust and uh, there's been a little bit of confusion in this state whether or not the vaccines are going to be uh, here in florida uh, we expect that uh, pharmacies that are connected that are getting the vaccines directly from the federal government, like CVS. So pharmacies, uh, pediatricians will be able to get the shots directly from the federal government, as will the healthcare taxing district. Unfortunately, because of a, I think, a extreme politics of Florida, Florida is not accepting the vaccines at the health departments. Uh, but parents should know that there is a way for them to get their children vaccinated in Florida if they want. There may be a little bit of delay, a few, a delay. And also keep in mind that a pharmacy, the pharmacies, most of them can only vaccinate, vaccinate children from 18 months and older unless there's a doctor present. So uh, the other message I wanna uh, send to parents is to make sure before you bring your kids to get vaccinated, that you make sure that the provider you've chosen can vaccinate your children. And with that said, I think I'm going to give this to a professional who can tell you a lot more. And uh, Dr. Fox Levine. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Frankel. And yes, I'm here to speak to you today as a pediatrician. So, um, you know, what do pediatricians, um, what are we telling our patients? As your children's health care providers, pediatricians have a, mi a mission to prevent illness. And vaccines are one of the most powerful tools in our toolbox. Many of our families have sighed with relief after last week's announcement that there are now not one, but two safe and effective vaccines for our youngest and most vulnerable children. We've successfully vaccinated the children and adolescents over five allowing the efficacy or showing the efficacy of the vaccine and now are able to offer this age group the same protection. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, children have been less affected than adults. Yes, it's true. However, as the virus has evolved, we have seen more significant illness in children, especially the six month to two year age group, your grandchildren with COVID-19 being the fourth leading cause of death. While there, are over, while there are fewer hospitalizations and deaths than with adults, they still exist, with over 200 children dying due to COVID-19 in the past two years, including those children who have no underlying medical conditions. Even one child losing his or her life to COVID-19 when the efficacy of vaccines has been proven is one too many. With almost 8,000 children in the clinical trial safety data for Pfizer and Moderna, the CDC's advisory committee for immunization practices, otherwise known as the ACIP, determined the benefits 
of recommending these two vaccines for this age group outweigh the risks. The same side effects that re re occur with your routine vaccines have been shown in the studies. However, there are no children with serious allergic reactions, heart inflammation, or other serious problems related to the vaccine. The benefits outweigh the risks of being infected with the virus, which could include hospitalization, long COVID, which we see in children, multi-system inflammatory syndrome, and as I mentioned, death. Clinical trials show protection against symptomatic infection and expected protection against severe disease, as demonstrated with other older children and adults. Antibody levels after three doses of the Pfizer vaccine and two of the Moderna proved to be similar to antibody levels in the 16 to 24 year old age group and the 18 to 25 year old age group respectively. In addition, it has been shown that natural protection with prior infection of the unimmunized does not protect against future vac infections, which can lead to morbidity and mortality. Vaccine provides a broader neutralizing antibody response than natural infection. The best protection will likely come from a mix of natural immunity that we're getting from the environment and vaccine immunity. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends either vaccine with no preference of one over the other as soon as they're available. Vaccines should be readily available soon. Our office has been able to order vaccine um, as of last Friday. Anyone who is registered with Florida Shots should be able to order their vaccine. Pharmacies will be also administering vaccine as Congresswoman Frankel mentioned, and the health district is another option. The American Academy of Pediatrics has approved co-administration of the COVID-19 vaccines with other important routine childhood vaccines during the well visit. If your child has had COVID recently, it is now recommended to wait 90 days since the illness to vaccinate. Please ask your primary care provider with whom you entrust the care of your children to review the pros and cons of vaccinating your children for COVID-19. Our mission is to keep your children healthy and this vaccine is now allowing us to offer this protection to this age group who has had to wait the longest. Our job is to educate parents for them to be able to make an informed choice for their families. So in summary, both mRNA vaccines have found through clinical trials to be safe and effective for the children in the six month to five year age group. Vaccines, these families can now protect their youngest children with this vaccine to finally declare COVID-19 a vaccine preventable illness for all ages. Vaccination proves to be the safest strategy of protecting yourself and your children from future COVID-19 disease and possible long-term complications. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you, after hearing that, I can't wait to get my grandchildren vaccinated so that I can you know, get, literally get out of the house with them. That's, that's how I feel. And, uh, again, my message today to anyone listening, if you are parents and you want to get your children vaccinated or you need information, uh, that you should know that uh, there are many of us who are working very, very diligently to make sure that any child in Florida or any parent who wants to get their child vaccinated will be able to do so. Uh, call your pediatrician or healthcare professional that you trust. If you don't know where else to reach out, we're going to give uh, to the media today both the website and phone numbers of, of, of locations that you can call. And there will be a federal website up this week that will also tell parents where they can get vaccinated. That, thank you all for being here. Anybody have any questions? Can I repeat that just so that for our Facebook page they can hear this? The, the question is for parents who are nervous, they, 
they don't sh know whether or not you know the, the risk is too high. What what are you telling your patients? That the vaccine that the vaccine is safe and effective, and it's once it is available in our offices for this age group, the six months to five year um, age, we will be recommending it to our families. However, everyone has their own unique circumstances. And so that's why it's important to have the discussion with their primary care provider, because there may be unique circumstances for each child. Um, however, this, the vaccine through the clinical trials, and these are rigorous clinical trials as we've watched with the Pfizer vaccine, that it wasn't released until that third dose proved that it was safe and effective. And we have confidence in the clinical trials and the um, data that has been presented. We have confidence in the advice and recommendations from the CDC, the ACIP, and ultimately the American Academy of Pediatrics, who, you know, that's our, where we get our practice guidelines from. And that's the, the medicine that we practice is based on the data that's been through these clinical trials. Okay, anybody else? Yeah. Hi, uh, within the last few weeks, have you seen, or do you have a ballpark number of the particular age group that has been diagnosed with COVID at your particular practice? I can tell you, we, since um, really the beginning of November, we've been keeping a weekly total of children with um, not just coronavirus, but also with flu, because we've seen a lot of flu as well and the percentage of the children that we're diagnosing and now remember they're coming into our office so we're seeing them because they're sick and we're testing them and the percentage is somewhere between 13 to 17 percent over the last month or two and it's been pretty stable um, and it, it is coinciding, coinciding with the same percentage of influenza A that we're seeing a lot of. So there's a lot in RSV. There's a lot of illness in my 20 years in my career. I have never seen so much sickness in the month of June. Um, and honestly, I can't even say that I have in the winter months, <laughs> that this is really, you know, one of those years that now that we have a vaccine to prevent children for at least one of these illnesses and the flu vaccine will be also available again um, for the next strain, that this is the time for families to um, seriously consider having their children vaccinated.